today is going to be talking about the parasite and mold stealth pathogen connection. Why this matters, especially if you're dealing with any type of skin rashes, emotional imbalance, poor sleep, migraines, chronic fatigue, digestive issues, and a lot of sensitivities. We want to go over that here today, especially like sensitivities. When I talk about that, I talk about chemical based sensitivities, smells, scents, uh, vision based issues with light, even fibromyalgia and pots as well. So why this is so important is because I did a show on all the stealth pathogens. I'll link that up for you here today. Today's episode is going to be 2832. So head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2832. stephencabral.com slash 2832. And we'll link up the previous pertinent shows as well. But why this is important is because many people believe they're either dealing with a mold issue or a parasite issue. And I want to share with you why that may not necessarily be true. There are over 50% of residential and work-based environments have some level of water damage. And that, and since most mold, you get it from water-damaged environments, that means that pretty much the vast majority of people are exposed to mold. If you live in a damp climate, let's say like the entire east coast of the United States, right? You can be exposed to mold even in the outside environment where leaves are decaying, like I always talk about in the Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New England-based area, right? So, and then there's all the humidity and moisture of all the southern-based states too, like South Carolina and Georgia and Florida, et cetera. So what I'm just trying to share with you is that there's a lot of mold in the environment. And people don't necessarily always feel the symptoms. But what we found, and not just me, but my colleagues as well, when people have a parasite and then they get exposed to mold, then the symptoms become that much more prevalent. Maybe the sinus congestion, the digestive issues, the random skin rashes, the low mood, brain fog, fatigue. Right, And so why does this happen? Well, we have to understand that both a parasitic infection, having a parasite, which about 25% of the world has a parasite, so I think it's important to look at that, one out of four people, maybe even more, I've heard up to a third of people. And when we know this, and we know maybe that on its own is, yeah, it's hurting the immune system. It's certainly a great immune suppressor. Parasit parasites are even a larger immune suppressor than even mold. Now, that can vary based on the level of infection of either one, but certainly parasites are known to be a bigger inhibitor of the immune system and potentially cause all sorts of health issues, including autoimmune, which is wildly on the rise. So if we step back just a moment, we say, well, why would this be? Why would people feel worse being exposed to mold if they already had a parasite? Well, parasites already begin to increase inflammation in the body from what's called a Th2 chronic immune reaction. This means that if a virus or bacteria or parasite or fungus is in the body for long enough, typically greater than six weeks, and there's been an immune reaction to that for greater than six weeks, the body starts to move towards what's called more of a chronic inflamed state. Those are typically the Th2 immune helper cells like the cytokines and the histamines and a lot of the uh, prostaglandins that the body built up over time. Okay, Why does that matter? Well, it matters because this then leads to chronic inflammation in the body and chronic inflammation in the body begins to shut down the mitochondria. So the mitochondria don't work as well. If the mitochondria don't work as well, we have less energy. We begin to ferment fuel for energy, which then leads to maybe short bursts followed by fatigue in both the mind and body. So brain fog, right? Difficulty thinking, clarity of thought, and then weakness, muscular weakness, full body weakness, just fatigue, poor endurance, poor stamina, huffing and puffing, even just going up the flight of stairs. I had all of these things again when I was just in my teens, right? In the early 20s, I didn't know why. There was nothing like this in terms of information back then. 
It's not that long ago. I mean, how long ago were we really talking about? Uh, let's go back 23, 25 years. That's about it. 25 years ago. I know that seems, if you're only 25 years, it seems like forever, right? But, you know, let's say you're in your 40s and older. 25 years is not, not that big a deal, not that long ago. There was no information like this. There was legitimately no internet. So when you think about it, there was no way to really spread information, just books. And that's why when people ask, how did you read thousands of books? No, it's not how, I had to. That's how we got information. Like that was the real spread of information. Even in the early 2000s on the internet, it wasn't information like it's curated right now. And it was much slower speeds. So that's why the internet is amazing. The spread of information is amazing as long as you don't take things at surface value and you continue to go deep. People should still read books because it gives you a depth of knowledge, not just a breadth of knowledge. So getting back to those mitochondria, when they become inflamed, they can't produce ATP, the adenosine triphosphate, the energy we need actually to squelch inflammation, to boost the immune system. This is really crucial. So now think about this, your body has parasites. It's inflamed. And you might just feel the symptom, but you don't know you have parasites, right? You might not be, you might not be the typical presenter. You might not have um, night sweats or poor sleep or teeth grinding or uh, maybe even loose stool. You might not have those symptoms. It might be at a lower level. Okay. But now you get exposed to mold. And when you get exposed to mold, all of a sudden, your body begins to shut down. The grogginess upon waking, the fatigue, the poor tolerance to exercise, the brain fog, which I can't stress enough that so many people with mold have, and the overall aches and pains and skin rashes. You might not have all of them, but you might have some. Well, why does this matter? Well, now your body is fighting how many things? Mold and its mycotoxins, which is essentially its waste, and also the parasites. And many people don't know this, but they may also have candida overgrowth. They might have bacterial overgrowth in the gut. So these path, why are they called stealth pathogens? Well, they're not regularly tested for with your medical doctor. So they go unnoticed, but you have these symptoms. If you've read the rain barrel effect, you know about those symptoms as they begin to build over the months and years, unless there was an acute exposure. And all of them aren't tested for by conventional medicine. So what do doctors do? Well, it's not that they are not, it's not that they don't care for you and they don't want to help. They do, but they have no methodology for helping you. None. They don't test for them and then they have no protocols. So when I went first to the doctors, they, they wanted to help. They had no idea why my glands were swollen all over my body. They had no idea why my white blood cells were so low. Literally no idea because on my blood work, everything looked okay except for those, uh, the, um, CBC and differential and the lymphocytes and the uh, white blood cells, et cetera. They were low. Why was this happening? They had no idea. They thought maybe I have cancer. Maybe I have all other types of viral-based issues and it. They weren't able to find it. And so that's the problem. With blood testing alone, you can't find stealth pathogens. But you can with things like the mold and mycotoxins test. You can with the bacteria and parasite stool test. You can look for candida bacterial overgrowth with the candida bacterial um, with the candida metabolic and vitamins test, with food sensitivity testing. So you can find these things. That you do have options. Now you don't have to run these. I'm not saying that that's a must. But what we need to do in order to begin to heal is understand: Do I have parasites? Do I have mold? And then how do you go about fixing those? So I'll link up the lab tests that you can do right from home. And any doctor can run them. So these aren't like special labs that we own. We don't. We don't own any of the labs. You just need a doctor to sign off for you. And we have a doctor in all 50 states in the United States. We have a doctor overseas in Australia, medical doctors in Australia and New Zealand, doctors in Canada and the UK. So it's just like we want to be able to help people globally. And I'm grateful to say that we're the first global practice to do this. But I want this to become the norm. I don't want it to just be myself and, and all the integrative health practitioners that we work with as well. Like We need more people teaching this. That's the truth. But let's say that you uh, can't afford testing or you don't want to test. That's okay. You can begin to work the protocols as well. The first thing is to remove the source. So you can't necessarily remove the source of the parasites because hopefully you're not eating parasitic foods on a daily basis. 
But we can get them from simple things like a salad bar. And I'm not saying not to eat at a salad bar, but it, it is possible, right? Because they live in nature. They live it. You can literally get them by walking around on soil. And I'm not talking that you shouldn't do that, but I'm saying these things are, they're real. They really happen. You can get them from undercooked meat or undercooked fish like sushi. Does it mean that you shouldn't eat sushi? Well, maybe, right? Like maybe. I don't eat raw fish anymore, even though I love sushi because it's too easy to get a parasite. It really is. So I'll eat sushi, but it's cooked now fish. And it's just, it's something to think about. You don't have to do that. But what I'm doing is I'm sharing that with you. And then make sure you have good hydrochloric acid production in your stomach. Important as well. And then for mold, if you are exposed to water damaged buildings, you need to fix the water damaged building. Because if not, you're always continuing to be exposed to it. Air filters are great, and I definitely recommend them. You can even do a mold protocol, but you may have to repeat it until you get that water damaged, uh, water damage fixed. So here's how we do it. People always ask, what, proto what protocol comes first? First, a seven to 21 day functional medicine detox. Has to. Here's why. Many people with parasite based issues and mold issues have what is called congested detoxification and elimination pathways. Poor intestinal function, poor bile flow, and they're dealing with a lot of toxins inside of their body. If this is all new to you, I have a completely free detox course. Please take the course. If you're a practitioner and you, you don't exactly know how phase one, phase two liver detoxification happens, how it works with the skin, the kidneys, etc. It's a free course. StephenCabral.com slash courses. Just click the one on detox. It's completely free. Okay, so seven to seven to twenty-one day functional medicine detox. The more symptoms, the longer you should do that seven day or twenty-one day detox. Okay. Next up is the parasite protocol. It's called the parasupport protocol. This will allow you then to kill the parasites and bind them up in the intestines and harmlessly remove them. If you're someone that's prone to constipation, that if you don't have at least one to two bowel movements per day, please use the intestinal cleanse along with that to further bind them up and remove them from the bowels. That's eight weeks. After that eight weeks is up, I would use, if you're not already using, something like the Clean Gut Probiotic or the Daily Probiotic Support. I would start with the Clean Gut Probiotic and then move on to the Daily Probiotic Support. You can use that during your parasite uh, protocol as well, the parasupport protocol. Okay, next, you will move on to the mold detox protocol. That is also eight weeks. Along with that, I recommend with both of these using the daily foundational protocol to get all the B vitamins and the, the nutrients that your body needs. But I also recommend the immunity protocol. That's the alkalizing vitamin C, the balanced zinc, as well as vitamin D3. And the reason I recommend those is that you're always going to be exposed to mold in the future. I just want everybody to know that. Some people are just asymptomatic. They don't have issues because their immune system is also able to eradicate parasites and mold. That's where we need to get you to. So the goal is to do the mold detox protocol, but transition you to a healthy and strong immune system where your body begins to take over so that you don't need to be on a mold protocol for the rest of your life. Right? Like that's really the goal. And these protocols are scientifically backed and they use the best of nature. Specific extracts proven to kill the mycotoxins, remove them, kill the mold, remove, right? Kill the parasites, remove them. And they use it in a very systematic manner so that you don't have all of those die off based reactions. So I wanted to share this with you here today as at least a, a foundational based podcast on why. People often with really tough mold-based symptoms don't fully get well or why they're so bad is because they have a pre-existing parasite-based issue that they may want to work on first. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if there's any questions. Just leave them in the comments below. Ask my team. We're always happy to help. And of course, if the show was helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.